Hello, I'm Mark. I'm Casey. And I'm Patrick. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about one of the first Cybertruck records to fall. But first, roll that title. Record. You're watching the Tesla Life Express! Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fake audience. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Wanted to talk a little bit about the new uh, record that Cybertruck has just... A record. A new record, and it's kind of a weird record, but... We're going to talk about it anyways, and maybe some other Cybertruck news. This uh, record, which was reported uh, on in uh, Tesla Roddy, uh, talks about how Cybertruck was the U.S. best-selling vehicle over $100,000 in June. So we all know that the Foundation Series uh, is a, a truck that uh, costs minimum of uh, just over a hundred thousand. It could be one twenty if you get the beast, but um, this is uh, this is well known, um, and we know that um, other trucks uh, that are from other manufacturers are kind of pricey as well. Uh, this is not a a cheap category to be in. Uh, but we do know that once the Foundation Series ends, the price of the uh, of the two motor version is going to drop about another twenty thousand dollars to get down to about eighty thousand. So that's going to be more in line with the current truck market: the F one fifty Lightning, the Rivian, uh, the GMC Hummer, uh, other vehicles like that are going to be in that eighty thousand dollar price range. This this. Uh, thing about $100,000 cars being at the top of the list for sales, it's not a huge category anyways. There's not a lot of people that are buying $100,000 vehicles to add to their stables uh, in their massive mansions, I imagine, because uh, this, is a, this is a unique category uh, and kind of, kind of not something I would report on anyways. I understand the media is always looking for something to report on Tesla. And this is, yeah. this is something that they certainly can do, but it, um, it's kind of, uh, I don't know if you really want to be at that, the top of that list based on the price that people have to pay for a truck at this point. We know again, when it starts to come down, it becomes a little bit more relevant. And I, as well as uh, Casey and Patrick do believe that, over time, the price of the Cybertruck will drop as the manufacturing ramps up. As they they sell more and more of the vehicles, they're going to want to be able to produce more, and that's going to be able to help them lower the cost. So I don't mm -hmm. think that eighty thousand dollars is the bottom amount. I think it's it's going to drop in different variants, uh, maybe even a single motor at some point. Uh, I think we're going to get it down to a a, a much easier to handle price uh, for someone that's looking for an all electric pickup. Yeah. For example, uh, I didn't buy uh, when Model X was most expensive, but I did buy in the meat of it. Uh, if you had bought all the options on my car, which I did not, um, you would have been paying over $160,000. Today you can get that same car uh, for under a hundred thousand dollars. And uh, Patrick, you've got a Model Y, uh, similar situation with that. Not quite, so high, but I think they touched 80. 80 uh, they were they were able to top out over the uh, the IRA credit, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, they were. Um, and especially if you got the performance version, which I did not. Yeah, um, yeah it's we've seen this in on last Wednesday's show. We talked about how the Model Three has gone from sixty thousand, and now there's a thirty-five thousand dollar version available. The exact so, same car. With yeah. The so yeah, <laughs> yeah. Even even as inflation is drive drive. Uh, been pushing prices the other way. Tesla's been able to improve their manufacturing systems and uh, increase their volume and bring down costs. And I, I think we'll see the exact same uh, curve with the Cybertruck. The part that I find amazing is that um, trucks, when I was a kid, were utility vehicles that were affordable. And now some of the average prices for new trucks are $80,000. Yeah. That's just crazy in my mind. They They went from being utility work vehicles to these luxury rides that 
too many people that have office building jobs to drive anyway. It, it, it makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it is something that the truck market has really uh, gone upscale uh, in the past, you know, decade or so. It's been it's been the prices continue to go up. In fact, the race seems to be who could get to eighty thousand the fastest uh, among yeah. <laughs> the uh, the ice manufacturers of pickup trucks. Uh, by adding bells and whistles and leather seats and two-tone stitching and whatever else. It's uh, <laughs> it's something that really, uh, back you know, back in the day, 30 years ago, you were happy with vinyl seats because guess what? It was a work, work truck. It was going to a construction site. It was going to be beat up every day. You exactly. All these luxuries. But, you know, I, I understand that you, you can have both. You can have mm -hmm. different ranges, and I, I think that will continue. But... Uh, with the Cybertruck as well, some of the other electric variants that are out there, uh, having a truck that can generate some of its own power uh, on a job site when there may not be reliable power, it's mm -hmm. got to be a huge win for a contractor. So I think these these vehicles will find a niche with contractors, uh, and I think that um, they will become more and more popular because uh, they're so independent. You don't require to have a, you know, a generator with you. You don't require right. to have a, an extra battery pack with you. All these things are kind of rolled into the, uh, the infrastructure of the vehicle itself. Exactly. One nice thing about those ice truck prices going up is it makes room in the market for an expensive EV that has a large battery pack, which today exactly. still has a significant cost. So that's kind of uh, the side benefit of that. Oh, Casey's yeah. back. Uh, what when I started at um, at, uh, at Chevy, it was right about when the Volt was coming online for sale to the public. And uh, a Silverado, or not Silverado, a Suburban then, with the three-row uh, bench of cloth, was about $50,000. And, and when I left, shortly after the Model S came out, it was starting at eighty dollars for that same, same, same truck. Uh, that yep. was a shock to me. And then, you know, you add the stuff that people want, and it was easily $100,000 for a truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So again, um, as uh, as time goes along with the Cybertruck, uh, as mentioned, we will we do expect the price to come down as volume production goes up and more and more people get involved in the market. Uh, once this um, foundation series ends its run, uh, which you know could be sometime near the end of this year, is is what estimates are currently. Uh, and of course, there's a huge backlog of people that want to get on that uh, that train as quickly as possible once the foundation series has sunsetted. But uh, we will we will see. Um, there's been bumps in the road as we've gone along. We've seen some recalls. We saw a wiper motor issue. Uh, we've seen some issues with a rivet that is required in the, in the uh, lightning pedal. We've seen some, uh, that's out to you, Casey, you know that. But, uh, there is, uh, there's been a few issues, and, and there will continue to be some issues. Uh, most recently, there was a um, something with the uh, wheel covers, right? We had a, an issue that, uh, that they were running, uh, wearing out the side uh, by, and I think, oh, yeah, we've got a photo that we can share from uh, Sawyer Merritt's uh, page, his Twitter feed. Let's go share that. Here we are. We've got the the old and the new in a comparison. I'm not seeing it yet. I had, right. had a chocolate and I had to clean them before she touched stuff. You, <laughs> you don't want chocolate all over the place. You don't. Are you seeing the share now? Yes. Very good. And you can see the difference really is in the distance between the rubber and the actual plastic wheel cover the distance is now larger in the new one and it was much closer in the older one yeah that is not much of a change at all i like the look of that yeah they kept they kept the integrity of the look very much so i was kind of surprised that it still very much looks like the old one it's just that the tab the plastic tab does not extend as much as it did in the old one which was causing the wheel rub when the tire bulged right yeah, I, I still not a fan of it for myself, but it, it, I like that it kept the integrity of the prototype and of you know for the people who actually already have one of these in their garage. If they yeah. they want to change drastically on them, uh, so uh, that was nice. They were able to to do that while minimizing the damage because tires be expensive. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, they are, especially on this truck. <laughs> yeah, and you don't want the side wearing out. I mean, that's... <laughs> you, exactly. You 30, miles. Why are you changing these tires? Because the sides are worn out. What? The side uh -huh. is worn out. Exactly. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's uh, that's one of the changes that they've run into, and of course, this engineering fix took them a few months uh, to get uh, in line um, because, of course, they they stopped uh, shipping the vehicles with those uh, wheel covers uh, once they found that there was an issue, and that was still a, a few months after after they started. So, uh, it took about half a year or so to uh, get those uh, get those redesigned and start to uh, distribute them again. Uh, no news on how they're going to get it out to owners. I guess there'll be some sort of notification, hopefully through the application, to let you know that you can come by and pick up your new set. Yeah, you'll have to go pick it up from them. Uh, or actually, yeah, they'll probably apply it but either way. Uh, some of the owners were not happy to get that news. Like, why not send it to my house or send a tech to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd, but, I can't um, say I fault them for that. You spend one hundred twenty thousand dollars for a truck. They send it with bad wheel covers. They could come to my house and deliver. Them. <laughs> well, yeah, and when you schedule it, you might end up getting mobile service. You might, uh, you might. Yeah. So if you have a I, good I relationship with your the service schedule. center, yeah. Uh, yeah, schedule it, and then uh, uh, in, in in that re request mobile service. Exactly. I've had them come out and do. The, a lot of stuff. It was actually really cool. There was one um, thing they needed to fix on my Model X, and I, I got a call saying, hey, I can come do this next hour. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. I'll be at my daughter's uh, soccer game. And he was like, where is it? I'll meet you there. So in the parking lot, he, he did the fix on the vehicle, and that was really cool. I thought you were going <laughs> to say he said, I like soccer. <laughs> <laughs> is your daughter's team any good? Like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, game on. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's that's kind of interesting that that uh, they've reached this milestone. I hope to see better milestones in the near future. You know, I, I hope they, to see them. They, they did get one. Uh, they are the best-selling EV truck uh, for the quarter now. That's yes. true. That's true. Yeah. Even with the high price, uh, yeah. they're out on top. High price. <laughs> But of course, but of course, the the people that are lining up to to buy this vehicle um, are not your typical customer, and they're not going to last too long. Obviously, right. Tesla has had an issue with uh, the amount of vehicles they could actually produce because they're learning how to ramp this up, and therefore, the number of vehicles coming out uh, has been low at the beginning and is now ramping up higher every week. So. We will see uh, a new change uh, going forward. Hopefully, we can see some records on the number of productions, mm -hmm. uh, which, of course, will be easy to beat because, of course, they're increasing every month. But uh, what will be really nice to see is when that price lowers to 80000 And ultimately, uh, if it lowers be below that, um, they're going to be able to sustain more and more purchases uh, than even, even what the Foundation Series has been able to do. So mm -hmm. that's going to record after record of uh, truck sales that are on top. So those are the kind of records I'm looking forward to hearing about. Yeah, and and, and based on nothing, uh, I feel that the dual motor uh, will be down to probably 70s or 60s, probably by the you know two or three year mark, um, just based on what we've seen of all their other cars in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can definitely see that. You can see that based on, on the Model 3 and others. Absolutely. But with that, yeah. I think we will wrap. Uh, Casey, any uh, any shout outs from you and Moto? See, what's that open? But uh, on, on Wednesday, <laughs> catch us on the Tesla Life uh, live stream, and uh, we'll catch you there. And uh, like I said, not only was that, that, that price prediction based on, on nothing, I also expect that just like all the other cars, it may have peaks way out, out there in the middle. So when it has the equipment you want at the price you can afford, Go ahead and, uh, if you want it, go ahead and grab it at that point. Exactly. That's our show motto. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Patrick, any shout outs from you? I'm with the Oregon Electric Vehicle Association. You can find us at OEVA. I blog occasionally at carswithcords.net about my future free from fossil fuels. Thanks. And Patrick is complaining he wants a larger red bar to put in even more information. About That's his... right. Yes. Yes. This is only half my cred, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> He's written himself a, a poster board border around his camera. 
<laughs> if you haven't already, please give us the thumbs up on the video, press that subscribe button, help us out, and we will catch you next time. And together we'll find out what's happening in the Tesla life. Stay positive, test negative. <laughs>